What's up everybody? Okay, so in this video, I wanna talk about how to make a Pompano surf fishing rig cheaply. You know when you're like cruising out to the beach and you're like, hey man, I, I don't have any tackle with me. I just gotta make my leaders myself. I'm gonna show you how to make a, a quick Pompano whiting surf fishing rig with like not having to go and buy one of those $5 terminal tackle rigs like you see everybody doing at the tackle shop. Cause I feel like the fishing world just got out of hand and every once in a while I just gotta stand in and say, hey, enough is enough, okay? So here we go guys, I'm gonna show you the cheapest way to rig up your surf fishing gear. These, just just your, your leaders and a simple video. Here we go guys. So I got a lot of questions about uh, what kind of leader I was using in all my surf fishing videos, the one where me and Spanta go out pompano fishing. The setup I was using was literally this exact same one right here, okay? All it is is like 20 pound mono with a hook right there. Can you see the hook? And then another hook right here. And then the sinker itself, okay? So basically it comes out to something like this. About foot and a half of mono leader attached to my braid with an all bright knot, what I would call like a double over knot. <laughs> I'll have to explain this knot to you, but it's just as simple as can be with another one right here. See if it'll focus. And then the lead weight itself. Okay, so when you're, when you're thinking about lead weights, okay, the way I look at lead weights, is I look at the water, I'm like, is it swift? Hmm, kind of swift. I think I'll go with a three. I'll throw the three ounce out there. And then if it, you know, the bait goes down the beach, I might need a four. I'll add one. And then if it doesn't go down the beach, I'm like three's good. If I'm using some smaller rigs and the, uh, you know, I can't, one you can't throw a four ounce weight out there with, like a one ounce, I'll just take a one, I'll chunk it out there. And if it goes down the beach, man, I might, not, I might need to put some more on there. I'll just throw it in the front little trough right there in front of the, right there on the shore and you know just use that as like a like a short rig okay so i just basically test the water add and take away weights from there you know, that's why i buy the ones i buy twos and i buy like fours so you can add a one to a two and get three or you can add a one to a four and get five like it allows you to just kind of adjust fire from there so you might be asking okay well what kind of leader material are you using simple guys Mono has been used in the fishing world for like eons, okay? And it was like catching fish way before they ever had fluorocarbon. Fluorocarbon drops on the scene, markers get a hold of, and next thing you know, everybody's got fluorocarbon. I've caught everything on mono. Tarpon, pompano, redfish. Mono works, guys. Now, is fluorocarbon maybe better? Yeah, if you wanna pay for it. But this guy, I'm rocking. Some leader material I got from Walmart. I usually use the big game stuff. One second. This is the Berkeley big game mono, like this is 60 pounds, but for surf fishing, I usually go 20 or 30. Um, if you're getting cut off, use a little bigger line. If you're not getting cut off and you think they're seeing it, you might go a little less, you know, like this is 20 pound. I've been rocking 20, I've been rocking 30. I haven't really been cut off. Um, you know, if a shark gets it or a little little sandbar or a sharp nosed shark, you're probably, probably gonna get cut off. Bluefish come through, you're gonna get cut off. It's just part of the game, guys. You're saying, how much leader material should you use? Well, I just say, okay, well, if I was to bite this hook, could I see my, my braid? Can't see my braid, so we're rocking, you know, maybe like an arm's length. Usually when I do my offshore rig, I just go arm's length. That's like three feet, so I'm six feet tall. You know, two and a half, three feet, right? So. I know I'm gonna tie my, my uh, weight right here and then I'm gonna loop down my knot. This is a quick and easy process. All you're gonna do, it's really simple. Um, this is what I use just about 99.9% .9 of the time when I go out surf fishing, unless there's toothy critters out there because they'll cut you off and you gotta have some wire. But for pompano, redfish, things like that, uh, whiting, this is the, like, the rig I use. I learned how to do it when I was a kid. Nobody really taught me. It was kind of trial and error. I saw it one time with somebody's pole and I was able to just kind of pick it up. Um, but basically what you want to do, you're going to put your sinker at the bottom, tie that on first. I mean, you don't have to, but it's the way I do it. I just go ahead, run it through my sinker, bam, right there. I either use a double knot, triple knot, or like a quick clinch knot, which I'll just go ahead for, for a clinch, you know, for purposes right now, we're just going to do a clinch knot. 
and uh, just go around like five, six times, one for the road, boom. My theory on knots, okay? I'm just gonna go full disclosure on all this. A knot is a knot, almost is a knot. Whatever you can tie good and it doesn't come undone. Yeah, all brought, uh, yes, clinch knots are good. Uh, um, you know, you know, those trialing knots. Basically what I do, if it's thick line, I just use a clinch knot. And now you've got you a little clinch knot on there. Clinch knot will hold it. Now people go really crazy over knots. Like, I feel like it's a fashion thing. A knot is almost a knot. I mean, if you can tie it in a hurry and like three to five swells, then that's knot you need to go for. Because whether it's 90% breaking strength or if it's 100% breaking strength, if you can't tie it, it really don't matter. So I got my clinch knot on there. I love the clinch knot because it's easy to tie it's fast and with big leaders, with leader material, it usually does just fine. Um, barely, hardly ever have one slip. So bam, I got one at the top. Now what I want to do is, uh, you know, come up the line. So this leader is going to be about arm's length. That's what I always roll with. I say, bam, arm's length. I'm rolling with that. I'm going to come up the line here, probably like, you know, maybe start my first one like six inches or so. Because Pompano are kind of like, you know, some of them just are on the bottom. Some of them are midway up. And with this rig, you can put as many hooks up as you want. So I go about six inches up. I'm gonna grab me some right here. I'm gonna get me some, just like this. Yeah, I'll come out here. I'm just gonna do a quick loop knot, just like this. See if you can see that. See, I couldn't use big line because it wouldn't fit through my hooks. So demonstration wise, I gotta use the little stuff and kind of explain it. But all I'm gonna do is go through there do me a little knot, pull it tight, just like that. Whammo, okay, see how that is? Now this, this is where your hook's gonna be, right here. Now, to keep this from slipping, because if you hook a jack or a big redfish, this will like pull, watch, watch, it'll do, let's see. It's focused, watch, it'll pull out. See how it does that? So to keep that from happening, let's go back through, Let's do it again. Let's do the overhead, just a little loop on itself. Boom, all right, I got it back. It's a little kinky, but you know, kinky works, right? So for this purpose, I don't wanna tie it again. All right, there we go. See it like that? Sinker's there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up, I'm gonna loop it around right here and come back out and it's gonna keep it from slipping. And now I've got one that won't come loose. All I did was just go, up the line, loop it around. Now, literally all I'm gonna do is take my hook right here. This is a one-aught hook. This is what I use on like everything from pompano to whiting, whatever on the beach. You can use one-aught, you can use a little smaller. A little bigger is a little much for pompano. Um, so all I'm gonna do is stick it through the hole, the eye hole right here, you can see it. Boom, and I'm going to loop it through. See the loop? I'm just gonna stick the hook through it, and there it is, right? It just dangles. Now, you can adjust the length of this however you want. <laughs> you know, that's, 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 all, that's, that's all up to y'all. Um, the tighter, the, you know, the looser, however you want it. The key is you gotta be able to get the hook through it. And once you get the hook through it, you know, it's all up to you. Now, so I'm gonna come up the line again, like maybe, see, maybe another, you know, six inches. The key though, is you don't want the hooks to touch each other because if they do, they'll loop together and your bait will go like this and that's no bueno. So you're just gonna spitball this, guys. You're gonna go up another six inches to where this one will not hook into the other one. You're gonna do it again. You're gonna pull it out. Do an overhand loop, just like that. So you got the, see there's one, there's two. You're just gonna come up, you're gonna go around. It's gonna do a little knot up the line. And then we got another one. So I'm gonna take this other hook right here. I'm gonna run it through the eye. Just gonna pinch it down. Run it through the eye. Boom, just like that. Now, see I got two. One, two. 
I could put another one right here, I could put another one right here, and it's just like adjusting depths up and down, right? So all this is gonna cost me is one weight, two hooks, and the mono leader, which I'm gonna have anyways, because you can't really fish braid to hook, you gotta have some type of mono, this keeps the fish from seeing it. I don't really care too much for the little beads that everybody has on it. And then if I, if I put some uh, fish bites on it, that has some red on it uh, with a little tip of shrimp um, and I have a good leader for cheap. I'm not paying for all this extra terminal tackle. The only thing I might add to this is up here, put a little swivel. You know, you're just gonna tie a swivel on to attach your other line. If you don't wanna use like an Albright knot or a uni uni to attach your braid to mono. If you're not sure about how to attach braid to a mono leader, uh, Check out the Albright knot. Um, so get up on YouTube and you'll see a million ways to tie the, the Albright knot or the FG knot. There's, there's a big argument between the two, but I know how to tie the Albright knot in my sleep, so I'm gonna stick with the Albright knot, no matter if FG is better. I've yet to lose a fish because of it, but I can tie it in my sleep, and that's the key point. So whatever you decide, you decide to attach these things to, as long as it's tight, it holds, um, your drag should be kinda loose anyways, and I don't think a pompano is gonna rip the knot especially on 20 pound mono, just saying. So, in closing on this, I'm gonna give you one more trick. This is a bonus trick. I'm gonna tell you this is the one, one and only trick, all right? This is, this is a trick I learned from Brant, Angler Up with Brant. If you haven't seen his YouTube channel, check it out. He's a charter captain here in Pensacola, great dude. Now, he taught me this trick. Now, so you got hook one and you got hook two. If you take another one, take another piece of line, and you attach it down here to the bottom. And you you attach it to it with whatever knot you want, clinch knot, Albright, trilene, however you wanna do it. So I'm just gonna attach it right here. This is the top. You attach one right here, and then you attach you another hook right here, okay? And what's gonna happen is it's gonna float back. Here, I'll attach one just for just for demonstration purposes. All right, I'm back. All right, now, so this is just a little kicker hook. And you're gonna have to tinker with this to get everything just right. So all I'm gonna do is just gonna attach it with a clinch knot again, whatever knot you wanna use. So here's what you get. You get a one, a two, and a kicker. So like what's gonna happen is when this thing hits the ground, and this, this pyramid is gonna stick in the sand this kicker right here is gonna float up with your bait. Then you're gonna have this one, and then you're gonna have this one, and then however many more you have. And it's just gonna dust down but down here. I mean, like, how are you? It's just gonna sit by the sand, just off the bottom, and uh, this one is gonna get picked up. It's probably more than these two. So you're just adding an extra dynamic to uh, the depth, right? And it works, guys. Uh, really, I just wanted to kind of put this opinion out there because I feel like the fishing world gets way too confusing. There's way too much information get thrown out there and people, uh, a lot of people think that you gotta have expensive terminal tackle, you gotta have special fluorescent fluoro red beads and stuff. You really don't have to have that, guys. They didn't have that stuff for for a lot of years of fishing, and now all of a sudden it's gotten popular. So all you really need is some 20, 30 pound mono, whatever you can get away with, two, three hooks, one aught circle hooks, two aught, whatever is the size of the hook you need for your fish, just judging by the size of their mouth, and you just learn how to tie the knots, and you can create your own terminal tackle really cheap. You know, these little, these little uh, um, leader and, and and swivel sets you get like they're like four or five bucks at the at the tackle shop i can buy you know a 30 pack of hooks for <laughs> for like five or six bucks and you know i can buy my own weights and it works okay and and if i'm cruising out to the beach and there's no tackle store i can tie this on, like in my sleep because i've done it so many times so the key is learn how to tie knots uh, you know, figure out how to, uh, you know, do these little terminal tackles and you're going to be able to catch fish. Um, the longer the leader, the better, because you don't want them to see the braided line. 
And that's really it, guys. I just wanted to put it out there for you guys to understand how this is done, how simply it is, and don't try to overthink fishing. Like the more I've overthought fishing, the the less I caught. Now I just roll out there with bare minimum, good bait, and the right size hooks, and you're gonna catch fish. So that's it, guys. I hope you don't forget. That's it, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you guys next time. Follow me on Yak Molly on Facebook, Instagram. See you later. Oh, and I started a Patreon account. If anybody's interested, check that out. Um, you can just you can just you know be a part of the crowd. You can get back special behind the scenes stuff, or you can uh, I, I, I can even help you with your social media. There's that tier too. Like I've kind of done it all because I do social media in the real world. So see you guys later.